Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the stream here on GOG.com. My name is Total Biscuit, and of course, I run Axiom Esports, which is sponsored by GOG as their primary sponsor. So they let our esports team go all over the world, playing StarCraft and being generally awesome people. So, we're going to play some Pillars of Eternity. This is going to be a so-called mega stream, meaning that I'm going to be giving my save file over to the next streamer, who will be Outstar, Outstar Walker, not Outstar Walker. That's, that's the cheap knockoff version. Basically, all Outstar Walker does is go to Ikea and purchase Swedish meatballs and the occasional piece of badly made furniture. Pillars of Eternity looks something like this. And that shouldn't be there. <laughs> go away. Thank you. Pillars of Eternity looks something like this. As you can see, it is an RPG by Obsidian. It was kickstarted. It is very much in the old school vein of Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, and Neverwinter Nights, set in an original world, not based on the D&D rule set, which is probably for the best. And if at all possible, we are going to avoid spending half the time in the character creator. I'm told that that is very possible and is happening to a lot of people. So I'm just going to bear that one in mind. Let's not spend too much time in the character creator. Now, as a special treat, about halfway through the show, I'm going to be bringing on Adam Brennick, who is one of the developers of the game, and he's going to be doing a live Q&A with the chat, and he's going to be on for about half an hour to answer your questions about Pillars of Eternity while we play it in the background. Sound good? Excellent. That's what I like to hear. Without further ado... Not looking at the options menu. No, we'll do that later. We'll do that in a video of my own. I don't want to waste too much time on the stream. Let's go right in. Normal mode. Ooh, and there's stuff as well. All right, so we've got normal mode, which is probably for the best. I don't think Path of the Damned sounds like a good idea. You also have an expert mode, which disables a number of helper features. I don't want to do that either, because I have not played this game as of yet. Hmm. And then we have Trial of Iron. Only one save file is kept for the entire playthrough. If the player is killed, the file is deleted. You must start again. No! <laughs> no, 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 no. We will not be doing that. Absolutely not. All right. That's it. Let's go. Normal mode it is. We shall begin. Ooh, creepy. Yes, indeed. Already lovely aesthetic, as is to be expected. Now, what I really want this to look like is an updated version of Baldur's Gate, because, of course, that used a lot of pre-rendered backgrounds, which all looked really good for the time. So I'm hoping they do stuff like that. Some of the screenshots that I saw of this game, and I've kept myself blissfully ignorant of it for quite some time, looked absolutely I fantastic. For the path on a starless night. Let's give you a little bit more volume for this. That he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Well, that's unfortunate. I wonder how much narration is in this game, because obviously I can't jack the volume up too high. Alright, let's uh, just pop it right back down. So for any major narrated section, I will attempt to increase the volume just so you can hear it a little bit better, but it is a little bit tricky to do that. Okay. Character creation, ladies and gentlemen. Male or female? As you wish. We will go with male. And now we have race choices. Amimua. Alright, so that's Avatar, basically. A dwarf, of course. An elf, which looks elfy. Orlan. It's a cat, I think. It appears to be a cat of some description. Minus one might. Probably not best. Well, we're about to choose class anyway. I'll be playing a mage. And godlike. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough then. Hmm. I want to play a mage. I I do love that. So what's got the best stats for a mage? I don't know what the stats do yet, but I can make some assumptions, I suppose. Well, they all kind of seem. Uh, well, you'd probably want godlike, wouldn't you? You'd want plus intellect. One would think. 
We might we might go godlike, I think. All right, let's do that. Let's see what classes we have. Oh, sub race: death, fire, moon, and nature. Fire sounds good. It's literally on fire. Well, that seems like a very unpleasant way to be. And that will give you a boost. Okay, probably not what I want as a mage. Let's have a look at what else is available. Now you just look silly. Every encounter when reduced below 75. Okay, endurance. Alright, so that's kind of a healing sort of setup. Wellspring of life, dexterity, might, and endurance. And, yeah, so... I suppose it would be this one. Death, the death godlike is probably the best for a mage, I suppose. Admittedly, the guy that's on fire is pretty damn impressive, I have to admit. And the moon guy is pretty cool, too. That's actually a nice modeling there. Hmm. I don't know, maybe the moon one's quite good. You know, a little bit of healing's not too bad, right? I don't see why not. We can go with that. Alright. Next. Body type. So we can actually change the body type to... We can be a... We can be a tiny one! Look at it! We can be dinky. We shall be a dwarven godlike mage. There we go. Absolutely. Alright. Wizard. And chanter. So there's multiple mage classes available. Alright. Let's see. Wizard. Alright. He's a tiny wizard. Look at him. What does he do? He starts with arcane assault. Mid-range attack. Alright. Seems like the music says cut out. I guess it doesn't loop actively. Plus two lore. And then there's also Chanter, who I suppose is a different kind of mage, and has an axe for some inexplicable reason. Hmm. He does a bunch of chants. He's... I guess he's kind of a buff class, by the looks of it. And there are, of course, the monk. The cypher. What exactly is a cypher? Target allies with powerful soul-focused effects. Okay. Interesting. I have the ability to directly contact and manipulate another person's soul and psyche. I think we will go with a wizard. We're going to go with the wizard. I do like my spellcasters. So we're going to we'll play a tiny wizard. Look at him. He's dinky. All right. Spell. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Well, <laughs> these are things I don't understand at all. So we're going to have to click on them and find out exactly what each of them do. And I'm, I'm going to pop the music up just a little bit. There we go. Akamiya's Dazzling Lights. Overwhelms anyone in the area of effect with a brilliant and bewildering pyrotechnic display, decreasing their will and leaving them dazed. Sounds useful. We could get that. Fan of Flames. Uh, why would you not? It's a burning cold effect. Absolutely. Sounds good. Maybe get a defensive spell of some sort. Wizard's Double, for instance. Uh, that might be useful. To keep him alive. Or Spirit Shield. Which is damage reduction. Okay, sounds good. And we want one last spell. Jolting Touch, maybe? That's got Shock Damage, and it also jumps targets. I can see that being useful. Manolita's Minor Missiles. Okay. Hard to say which to go with, really, because I have literally no context. Parasitic Staff. Alright, that summons a weapon. Okay. That might be neat. We can do that. We can, yeah, we can go with that. Frankly, I have no idea what any of these do, so this is very much guessing. I'm sure they'll be just fine. We've got a defensive spell, we've got an AoE spell, we have kind of a crowd control spell, and we have a... Summon weapon and our default spell is like magic missiles basically. So Yeah, all right stats. Oh Jesus, right? Well Apparently might is highly recommended for a wizard. I guess might literally just increases damage and healing So plus might actually better than I previously thought it would be dexterity also good apparently because it gives you more action speed Perception not so much so, intellect is plus area of effect duration and plus will. So we'll definitely want to get a few of those. Let's increase our might for damage. And we can maybe get a little bit of constitution. I'm looking at what else would be useful. Resolve. Mm, probably constitution, because I'd prefer not to die if it's all possible. So let's get a couple of points in that, and then we'll whack one last one in might. I don't know about dexterity. The action speed seems useful. 
9% endurance and health. That seems useful too. We can go with that. But he's so tiny. Look at him. Alright. Well, I guess we're going to go with that then. Because quite frankly, I have absolutely no idea what to do with the stats. Alright. Next. Culture. God, you could spend a long time in this, can't you? So this is a, a buff of some description. That gives you resolve. That gives you dex. It even changes how you look. That's neat. That's really nice, isn't it? It actually gives you a different clothing style, which would make absolute sense. Old Valia. Gives you plus intellect. I'm also kind of basing it on how pretty the clothes are. Wow. That's wacky. Don't want to go anywhere with that, though. Can't be seen dead in something like that. We can uh, maybe get plus one intellect there, and we get our that mighty little breastplate as well. Yeah, so once the crown jewel of the Southern Seas, Old Valia is now the crumbling remnants of an empire of war warring merchant nations. Counting many humans and dwarves among their ranks, the Old Valian countries are still forces to be reckoned with and are proud of their rich cultural heritage and ability to blow things up with fireballs, hopefully. Ah, background. Jeez. Yep, they did... Absolutely did not skimp on the character creation. That's probably good for a lot of people. Mm. Let's see. What background am I? Well, law. What does law do? Okay, well, thankfully it does tell you. If you So this is used to activate scrolls. Higher law allows to use higher level scrolls. And also outside of conversations and scripted interactions. So you learn kind of knowledge and trivia there. Alright. What does mechanics do? Mechanics is traps and locks and machine stuff, by the looks of it. Okay. Makes sense. A slave, athletics and survival, athletics and law. So these are going to involve secondary skills, by the looks of it. I'm thinking artist. Law plus two might be good. Or you can go artist or aristocrat. I'll go aristocrat. We're going to be a posh wizard. There we go. We are now a posh wizard. Fantastic. Appearance, colors. Oh, can can I change? Can I, my head now be on fire? Unfortunately, not. I was hoping that the colors would affect the uh, the thing on the top of my head, but evidently not. Never mind. So I suppose we'll get the most British colors we possibly can. There we go. And the blue. About as British as I can get. And we also have custom heads. We can choose between three of them. That's quite. That's quite the... I don't know, I'd be pretty intimidated if I saw that in a dark alley. Quite frankly. They're all... They all, I th actually like this one best. I like the kind of crest on the head. That's pretty cool. There we go. Posh Dwarf Wizard and our portrait. Of which there are very many. That... It's got to be that one. I mean, it's not even remotely accurate, but it's got to be that one. There we go. And a voice... Many voices, it would seem. Which one to choose? I'm here. Follow me. Ugh. Steady does it. Huh? I've got this. <clears throat> my eyes are peeled. Huh? They're all a little bit American for my liking. Leading the way. <clears throat> the better part of valor. Yes? Leading the way. <clears throat> Keeping an eye out. Yes. Now I am the leader of the group. They're all bloody American. Ugh. A blade in the dark. I am intimidating and about three feet tall. Hmm. Hmm? I've got this. That, no. That is no. My eyes are peeled. I refuse. Huh? Leading the way. <clears throat> Easy now. I'm here. Leading the way. Ha! Easy now. I guess we go with Noble. Hmm? I shall lead us. Let us end this. Silence surrounds me. Yes? I guess we can go by that one. None of them are really the kind that I like, but hey. Enter name. There we go. Alright, we've managed to spend 14 minutes in the character creation. That's not bad. I could have probably spent a crap ton more time here. But that is a, that's a lot of customization from the outset, which I'm really quite impressed by. And my wizard has these attacks. There we go. And we'll see if these are any good. I plan to set people on fire. Let's go. Hmm. 
Oh, that looks gorgeous. Hmm. Well, how much of this is VO? Probably not a lot, so I've got to be doing some reading for you. The caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red moustache and uh, sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. Let's... can I... I need to adjust the volume levels, like, so the music is slightly lower. I'll try and do that after this. He nods towards a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle round here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case, you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. Rivers are not known for being terrified. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. He nods in your direction. Sparful nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. Alright, I wonder if they actually VO these, or if they just allow your character to kind of speak them, I guess. Let's ask where the berries are. They grow on a bush that's common okay. around here. It's Dragon funny Age style. Looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. What are those ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay, if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. All right. Ah, interesting, useful. Yeah, so this is all about unlocking different objects. I do wonder if they indicate which of them actually come from that, or if they just slide them directly in. Because I know in games like Fallout, of course, they indicate which option comes from which skill. And I don't know if they do that or not. All right. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot, not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. Indeed. Well, that is Baldur's Gate, isn't it? All right, let's, uh, I just need to adjust some things here. So, I want to knock down the rest of the volume, but give you guys more voice volume. Okay, so I'm going to knock down that and that. Keep the voice volume up a little bit higher, and then I can increase this. Do let me know if the voice volume is completely out of whack. Obviously, I won't talk over dialogue. Cool. Excellent. That's what I like to see. You can zoom out. It's really quite impressive backdrops. Good amount of detail. That's what you like to see. It definitely looks like Baldur's Gate, but it's a lot more modern. And anyone that thinks that Baldur's Gate looks this good hasn't played it in a long time. Alright, okay, so yeah, standard mm -hmm. portrait selection for abilities, that makes sense, and you can also actually have words with her. Springberries grow wild all over the place here. Keep your eye out. Alright, sounds good to me. And then you have an option here, so there appears to be a day-night cycle to consider. Much of attack orders, formations, scouting, I don't know what that does. 
inventory is on I, character on C, all sensible, journal on J. Look, these are people that have made a video game before. Map is on M, stronghold is H, which I assume is your stronghold once you get it. All right, let's go find some berries. I'm also told there is an option in the game to display whether or not something is skill related. Although, I could not tell you ex- uh, there it is. Cool. I- I guess some people would not want that option on by Certainly. default. I personally have absolutely no problem with the option being on. Oh, I shall. Alright. So... Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. You seem a little bit nervous about selling your sundries, quite frankly. Let's have words with them. You see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. Mm. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered with an uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Say, is there anything you need? Well, let's I've see got what some you've got. Do I even have any money? Probably not. Yep, that's how stores work. So I have a hundred. I can afford something, but I don't know if there's any point in it. Because I actually don't know what my guys are equipped with. I assume I can... That's a little annoying. It would be nice to be able to see both the inventory and what you're buying at once. So she uses a one-handed battle axe. And I use a scepter. Alright. Good to know. There's also a crafting system of some description. Also, if you hold tab, apparently, it shows you all the interactive objects, which is always useful. There you go. So there's boxes and stuff around the place that we want to be concerned with. Oh? Oh? Something else you need? Yeah, so it looks like everything's kind of standard. Although, the battle axe is actually 38. I wonder if there's a better one. Doesn't look like it. I don't think we're missing much here. I'm gonna leave it. All right, let's go raid the boxes. Certainly. See if anyone gets upset about it. Certainly. I saw boxes here. Let's steal things from them. In this crate, there is Darwinian clothing. Oh, interesting. The the breastplate that I have is an actual item. So it's not just, they didn't just make this completely cosmetic, they actually gave you a breastplate by default. Which apparently is a bad idea, because it reduces my recovery speed? I don't know what recovery speed means, so... This might be bad for me, as a mage, to be wearing this, but... It's cool that they give you the option. Hmm. So I can actually lockpick this. Let's go buy a lockpick and then go steal what's in that. Dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Yeah, you move the screen around with either push scrolling, which is actually a bit slower than I would like. I wonder if it's possible to increase the speed of that. Uh, there is edge screen scrolling. There we go. That should do the trick. There we go. Much better. And you can also angle the screen around with the cursor keys. Can't do it with WASD. Something else you need? Yes. Oh, is that worth 75 CP? Fantastic. We should probably just sell it. But I don't know what we're going to sell it for. We're going to grab some lockpicks. Um, guess we'll just grab two. I'll do the trick. And there we go. So I just guess I click trade. All right, and then it automatically goes in. Cool, that works. Let's go find out what's in the box. Yeah, it's... I tried to hover over it and it didn't actually show anything. Wow! That's, uh... Quite the chest you have there. Ah, I see. Okay, so I was hovering over the wrong thing. Recovery is the amount of time that spends between actions. So I really shouldn't be wearing that. I'm gonna put these on instead. There we go. Because, frankly, I don't want... Reduced recovery time. She could probably wear it, but she actually has uh, scale armor on. But I can give it to her. There we go. You can wear the breastplate instead. Alright, let's go open this then. If we can. Lock picked. Excellent. And we got a potion of minor endurance, which was probably worth less than the lock pick. Yep, sounds about right. Alright, oh. let's go find some bloody berries then, shall we? 
Certainly. I could talk to every NPC here, but I'm not going to do that. Because that's not very interesting to watch. Alright, explore things. Yep, thank you for the information. I planned on it. Hello, hello, hello. What do we have here? I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. Uh, thank you for informing me as to the well-being of the stream. Let's explore and maybe whack something on the head. It's not, I don't, it's not an ARPG. It's a CRPG. So, I believe you can pause combat and you can go into kind of slow mode. But it's mostly a, a tactical RPG. Hello, what do we have here? Combat uses a pausable real-time system because you will often manage more than one character at a time. So again, Baldur's Gate, uh, Icewind Dale, etc, etc. The options menu also contains the main choice for automatic pausing and so on and so forth. Alright. A young wolf. Let's blow it up with fire. Yes. If it's all possible. What do I have on first level wizard spells here that might be useful? We can summon our Conceal Holt's Parasitic Staff. There we go. Well, I guess that just summons. And what, what are we going to have her do? She's got a knockdown ability and a kick you in the face ability. So she can go and battle. There we go. And space is the unpause. When a party member takes damage, they'll start to lose endurance and health. Their portrait will begin to fill with a red overlay. The health bar to the left of their portrait will slowly start to decrease. You can get knocked out. Endurance keeps characters in the fight, but health can only be restored by resting. What's the, what's the actual difference between the two, then? I don't know. All right. There we go. I have a parasitic staff. We're going to hit them with it. There we go. That's neat. So I can summon a weapon, which I can wield. That's neat. And melee fighting is automatic, which is exactly to be expected. All right. Wolf's dead. Let's take its hide. Loot it. For yes. Certainly. This is it. Springberries. Exactly what we're looking for. You're the one who's supposed to be from some big shot noble family, is that true? Oh, so this is the stuff that's actually related to your backstory. Nice. Only to some. Our titles were purchased, not inherited. Yep. Yeah. How is it that you happened to come here? We hid the truth of our lineage, but it was eventually uncovered. Or we could actually tell him whatever. My family was disgraced by the lies of a rival. Our reputation is ruined. That's a damnable run of luck. Maybe the new setting will turn things around for you. Or I could be eaten by wolves. That's also possible. Been a long time since I've been this way, but I always did like it. Lord Raedric's offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. I'm here to settle, like the rest of the lot. It's a hard offer to pass off. Uh, I guess I'm just passing through. So they do some voice acting, but not all of it, which is understandable considering there's a significant amount of dialogue in the game. It's usually the case with the big city, just a little ways further up from the road. Where are you headed? That's a good question. I guess we're going to the city. Seems reasonable. The closest one is Defiance Bay, the capital, a few days out. Got its nice places, and it's not so nice places, just as the same as any city. But the duck is a good man. Is he? <laughs> oh, he's a bit quackers, as I hear it. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. Then will give me an earful. Let's be on our way. Why are you here? Kaliska sighs unevenly. Uh, I search the ground at her feet. My sister moved out here some time back. Sent me a letter. She seemed worried, but that's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out, and that's got me a little worried. But I'd do anything for her. She's, well, she's a much better woman than me. Well, I suspect she is. So I'm here, and we'll see. All right. Fair enough, then. Let's go back to camp. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath at Sparfalls getting you water anytime soon. He does what he feels like when he feels like it. We should check up on him first. Slap him around a little. Excellent! Breath of fire. Sounds perfect. Stream's just down the way. Come on, let's get water. Hmm? Certainly. Yes. He's a duck. He's not a duke, damn it. He's a duck. We've come to this conclusion. And that will be it forever. So this is the map. So this is what we currently know about this area. We could explore a little bit more. There's probably stuff around. I believe we've already... We have burned lady... Oh. 
Certainly. Uh, I assume that is a kind of herb and not literal. Someone's claiming the stream is down. Looks fine by here. It looks fine here. Yep, stream's fine. Hmm. And apparently you can also Certainly. move faster with fast mode. Nice. Useful to know. And we're not missing anything. Good. It's nice to have that. Helps to have a map. Nice lighting effects as well. You know, it, it looks suitably old school, but modernized. Which I like a great deal. And if you zoom in, there's actually quite a significant amount of detail going on. It's a deer! Get it! Set it on fire! Oh, it's buggered off. Travelers, maybe, or looters, or bandits. Bad sign any way you figure it. Let's kill them! Or loot their corpses. The corpse is cold to the touch, and a ripe smell wafts from it in putrid waves. A dark, crusted bloodstain besmirches its simple linen clothing. And he's got loot, so we're gonna have that. What do we got? So, leather armor, which I'm not going to wear because of the recovery speed thing. Uh. We should keep going around here. I want to find them. Are the bandits around here somewhere? Or have they buggered off? Looks like this is about as far as we can go, so... Can I just get water from the stream? I'm literally right next to it. It would probably make sense. Apparently not. Keep having to check the map. Make sure I'm going in the right direction. He buggered off, didn't he? He was the one who said he was going to get some water. Alright, so who do we need to speak to? Probably to a Deemer, I'd imagine. Still waiting on Sparfell, which means he's ignored me again. If I had known he wanted to slow us down, I'd have just tied him to the back of the wagon and dragged him. Sounds like a decent plan. I'm not sure why you didn't try that one in the first place, frankly. I'm sorry. You want your water, you better go find him. He's got all the skins. In about 25 minutes, we'll take a short break, which will allow me the opportunity to bring on our special guest, who's one of the developers of the game, and he'll be answering questions from the chat. So keep it civil. I'm sorry. You want your water? You better go find him. All right. Yep. Shit. Come on. Let's go look for him. Can't we just get water from the river? It's right there. Oh? It's like the excuse is he has all the water skins. All right. We could just take a, something else as a container. All right. Well, I guess following the river makes the most sense. Probably cross the bridge, actually. It's probably buggering around there somewhere. What a surprise. Sparful went hunting. At least he left the water skins. Come on. Nick him. You crouch at the riverbank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Kaliska waits nearby keeping watch. As you rise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. Out of the trees emerges Sparful. One of the guides, barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow and there's a strangeness to his gait, a spastic wobble in his ordinarily deft stride as he moves towards you with labored breath. Sparful, are you all right? I'm gonna go with no. Sparful's toe catches on a rock. He collapses forward in a heap, and we laugh at him. And then notice there's a feathered shaft with an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag, which is probably not so pleasant. All right. We're about to be attacked. Ambush. That's what you think. Oh. I summon... A thing. I summon Fan of Flames. And What's I also name? summon Hit You in the Face with an Axe. Uh, Go! Yeah! There we go, he's on fire. Look at oh. him. Whack him. Give him a give him a good hammering. Alright. Arcane Assault. Kind of the nose is taking a significant amount of damage, but it's okay, he's dead. No big deal. Go whack him. Sometimes a weapon or spell isn't well suited to penetrating the enemy's damage reduction. When the attack hits, the DR will wipe out all but a small percentage of the incoming damage. You'll hear your characters complain about it when it happens. Okay, fair enough. Ping him a bit. There you go. Come on, we have to get back to camp. 
We're good. For the most part. Anything good here? Money? All right. Might as well loot the rest of it. Oh, he has a bow. And a hide armor. And an agate, ag ag I suppose. I should probably mm -hmm. wear the hide armor. Like, 25% reduction on casting mm -hmm. speed doesn't seem totally unreasonable. And considering the amount of punishment that I took just off one bandit, it's probably a good idea that I wear something more than just clothes. But he does have such an attractive chest, doesn't he? There we go. Now I'm wearing hide armor. Oh? Dramatic music. Head back to the camp at once. Can we loot the other guy? I guess he's got nothing on him. They stole his bow, I suppose. Quickly! Back to camp. They have invariably been assaulted, because that's what the storyline dictates. Yep, everybody's dead. Big surprise. Alright. Let's see oh. what spells we can do. Apparently not too many of them. I think I've actually run out of spells. Yep, I have no uses left, so this is kind of a D&D &D thing. But I do have Arcane Assault, so we might as well give that a shot. Apparently the game voices are now too loud, I'm being told. Okay. The main problem is that I can't change the... There's the narration volume, and then there's the overall bark volume, and they're not... Uh, they're not separate. So if they're barking in the middle of a fight, it becomes kind of a problem. So I'll knock that down a bit. There we go. All right. So Arcane Assault, can I hit both of them? If I let... Nope. All right. There's two there. Can maybe hit them. What you need? Really want to try and knock down that guy. Well, Arcane Assault didn't work out as well as I hoped. In fact, my guys aren't actually attacking the people I told them to attack. I assume because there was a taunt or something? I really want to knock down the hunter. Yes. And then maybe we can drop Arcane Assault here instead. There we go. Knock him on his ass. Hmm? Pause the game. Go stab him in the back and try not to die horribly. Oh? That's my plan. I'm sticking to it. Let's do another Arcane Assault. There we go. At least he can take a bit more hits. Let us end this! Sounds like it might be a good idea. Whack him one. Oh. Health bar is flashing red. That's not good. I was keeping an eye on this green thing, but apparently that's not as relevant. Oh, he's also being flanked yes. as well. That's probably not good. Let's get him out of combat if we can. Alright. Now yes. we can turn him around. And then we What'd can whack need? the other one in the back. There you go. We're good. And I think he can attack yes. from range with the scepter, right? Yes, he can. Well, we're not quite dead. Yes. Nice. Yes. All right. That's a lot of junk. <laughs> I'm tempted to turn it into a tank of some sort. I guess we can sell it later at some point. There we go. Yes. Oh. Well, this is what probably about to get pretty idiotic. Indeed. She's not taking much damage at all, so she's evidently pretty good with the dual wielding. All around you lie the massacred remains of the other travelers, peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy on the blood-damp earth. Kaliska puts the back of her left hand to her mouth as if to ward away the horror like a poisonous vapor. A handful of dark figures stand above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, jerking their axes from bodies as if half-split logs as they prepare to add you to the sprawling pile beneath them. One of them, towering and severe, with a thick beard tasseled with knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of the man you recognize as Hayden, the last of your caravan left standing. Lay down your arms, trespasser! Do not forfeit this man's life for a fight that you will lose. Hmm, so we have some options. The ruin has not been sullied by our hands, men of... Okay, we've got a diplomatic lore option that we can take. That's probably not a terrible idea. The rest of it is just a bunch of other answers that may or may not work so well. Hmm. Let's go with Law 1. Your words carry no weight when I have seen the truth with my own eyes. Blood must be paid for for this intrusion. 
you now have one rank in a disposition reputation. These reputations represent how people perceive you and your personality throughout the world. Even seemingly nasty reputations will be favoured by some people, and benign reputations often bring out the worst in certain people. No disposition is inherently good or bad. Okay, good to know. So I say again, lay down your arms. All right, well, we tried. We have intellect options. We actually have a 15 intellect option, which is probably better than the 13 intellect option. Judging by the string of animal teeth around your neck, I'm guessing you're a worship of Galloway. Okay. All right. We can give that a try. The man frowns and motions as if to swing his axe. Head and winces, but the blow never comes. Instead, the man cocks his head intrigued. Of course, but he would not. It is by the command of all the gods that we accept this charge. Well, how do you know? Because it's consistent with their beliefs or because it's what you were told? It, it's always been known to my people. Ah, I see. And what of Galloway's edict that weakness and age must be purged by youth and strength? You think Galloway would want some moldy, crumbling stones to survive long after their builders have turned to dust? The man's nostrils flare as he fumes. He would not. He told us otherwise. I'm sure he did. Just not you personally. But why should that stop you from killing innocents? Distracted, the man's grip falters on his axe handle, and he nearly fumbles it, avoiding affording in the moment he needs to dodge out of his swing, which comes too late. Howling with rage, the man charges you instead. Well, bollocks. All right. So what do we got? He's going to fight with us. That's nice. I have significant health damage and should probably avoid direct confrontation. Kaliska, on the other hand, has 5,000 hit points and doesn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. So... We shall attack. You should go right after the leader, actually. You go and bash the leader's head in. Why don't you try that? That's going to be your plan. I don't yes. think I have any, I have no spells left, so I literally have Arcane Assault. I've also got... Edit Grimoire is, allows me to customize which spells I have access to. So I can do an Arcane Assault. Not that that's going to do a lot. I think we're just going to target the hunter with our... With our little second thingy. There we go. Does he have a move? Does hmm? he have anything he can do? He has Blinding Strike. Okay, I can see that being useful against the leader, so we can go with that. There we go, let's apply that. And we can just whack him about a little bit, can't we? Alright, well, the leader's dead. That went reasonably well. My guy's just gonna stand back, if you don't mind. Hopefully everything's fine with that. And she can go with another bash as well. Knock him over. There you go. An unwise gesture. That's what we like to see. Your leader lying... I can never pronounce that word. Is it supine or supine? I can't remember which. Your enemy lies supine on the ground, unable to rise. His companion is now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but at the sky above you. Forgive us, he says. Barely audible beneath his choked sighs, a whisper of wind stirs the air. At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good. Good. The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. The wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, electric and volatile, upended pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to seep beneath your skin like a jetty beginning to succumb to the surge of a great wave. And where it pierces you, it feels as though it is rending you apart from within. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across chest and bowel, Adima's body stirs, and with great effort he raises his sagging head. His eyes barely open, he looks directly at you. Get inside! Run! Well, this doesn't look good at all. Yep, I'd say this is bull. Unpleasant. Straining against a gale that threatens to pull you off your feet with every step, you set your hands in the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With a last burst of energy, before your arms give out, you swing yourself up to the ledge. Head and trails behind, slowed by injury and delayed by early hesitation. As he nears the face of rocks, one of the fallen attackers, who has been feigning death, lunges for Head and then topples him onto the rocky ground. Well, he's buggered, isn't he? Restrained, head and lashes out against his fatigued assailant, but struggles to break his hold. They are close to you. On the opposition, you would have a good chance 
of hitting your mark. Well, I could try to channel a bolt of energy towards the attacker. We can give that a shot. And I don't have dexterity 15, so I don't have an option here. All right. Your aim is true. And the hit jars head and loose. Lurching to his feet, head and clambers up the base of the rocks. As he nears the top, however, the wind flares, pulling him sideways and tearing one of his hands free. But diving out into the hard rock, you manage to catch hold of it. Securing his other hand, you pull your waning strength. And it feels as though your arms will be jerked from their sockets. They hold just long enough for Head and to set his feet and join you on the trembling ledge. There's a deep resonance to the swelling wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet and inside the cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections and settling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. And there we are. And that is probably taking us into what looks to be a dungeon. Is that? Uh, probably. A Bewick. Had to be. Then we're lucky to be alive. And we're the only ones. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. All right. Let us do just that. Sounds like a good idea. See what's interactive here. Oh, I shall. Well, we're not going that way. This is the map. We know nothing about this area. Well, let us advance. That should be far enough. <sighs> but what now? We look for another way out. Storm has to die sometime. Kaliska shakes her head. Windstorm! Of a kind they only get in Eirglanfath, I assume that's correct. Not too many people live through them, so it's hard to know what's true. The Glanfath in word is Beowick. To them, it's the gods' way of reaping the souls of the land that couldn't find their own way out. But they'll take a living soul as soon as a dead one. Still got yours. You don't seem too upset about all of this. Kaliska looks you in the eye, a volatile current running beneath her voice. Maybe you just don't know me well enough to know what upset looks like. And maybe I've seen worse too. Seen worse and kept on walking, because there's nothing else to be done and because there's other people you care about who still need you. Okay. Mm -hmm. You obviously don't want to converse right now. I shall. Let's go have a look-see. See what we find. Ooh, it's a nicely bottled area, I'll give them that. Oh, it's a goblin of some sort. A trembling, sickly creature emerges from the dark, clutching a spear. Knobby elbows and thin ribs show through its scaly flesh, but you recognize it as a Zorip. It watches you cautiously, breathing in ragged size. Hmm. Shall we be nice to it? I'm going to let the chat vote on this one. Are we going to tear it to pieces, lizard? Or are we going to be benevolent? Choose now. Let me hear what you have to say. I'm not sure if I actually uh, have the features for a straw poll. I don't think I have it set up on here. But uh, yes, you guys can uh, let me know what you would prefer. Are we going to be nice to it or are we going to tear it to pieces? Most people seem to want to be nice to it. Yep. No rip and tear. Okay. Be nice to the lizard. It shall be. All right. The Zorop recoils! Fingers still wrapped tightly around its spear. The creature cocks its head and approaches you, a soft clicking sound emanating from the back of its throat. The creature sniffs around you and finds nothing of interest. It steps back and resumes its defensive posture. Okay, well... Let's raise our arms and stand still. The creature cocks its head and approaches you. A soft clicking sound emanating from the back of its throat. Okay, I guess we just slowly back away from the damn thing. We can either kill it or slowly back away from it. The Zorip watches warily as you go. Alright, just leave the bloody thing. Oh, there. I shall. Oh, now it wants to kill me. Okay, well that's hardly my fault. I wanted to go that way. I tried to reason with it, now I'm going to set it on fire. Mm. Speaking of setting on fire, I haven't camped in a while, which means I can't actually use any of my damn skills, which is a bit annoying. I wonder if we just run by it. Uh, no, we can't. Kill it. Murder it horribly. Right now. If you don't mind. Thank you. 
It's on fire and now dead. It mm -hmm. started it. It's not my fault. Come on. Certainly. I tried my best to make to reason with it. It's dead now. Now I'm probably going to have pissed off everything else. All right. So I've got a spear. I wonder if that spear is actually any good. Let's see what mm -hmm. Kaliska's equipment actually is. It's a lot of stats. Hope you like role-playing games. Alright, so she's wielding an axe and a torch. Wonder how good the spear is in comparison. It's about the same, it's just a, it's a piercing weapon. I'm not sure if I can put it in and replace the torch with it. Apparently we can. Alright. I wonder what effect not having the torch will have. Evidently, not much. Wow, she's wearing the torch. That is dangerous. Don't do that. Don't do yes. that, kids. It's a terrible idea. Certainly. Can't wear a torch like that. It's insane. And items, items, items. Ooh. An Anguithan Relief Gem. Uh, well, that means. What is it? Uh, it's a gem. Okay, thanks for that information. Tattered Journal. Hmm. <clears throat> I can't believe my luck. A few rounds of dice and I've got my hands on a genuine egg with an artifact. The fellow who had it said it was a pretty nothing as far as he's concerned. He's not willing to go digging in some ruins, but if he's right about this gem leading to a hidden treasure, then that's worth sneaking past a few painted elves. I'll head to Slantlis in the morning, and it's just a matter of finding this relief he was talking about. Okay. So that's something to bear in mind. A side quest obviously involving this particular thing. And I guess we just grab the rest. We have no camping supplies, so I can't camp for extra spells. A bit unfortunate. That looks like a puzzle room. This is going to be terrible, isn't it? Those tiles look suspicious. Let's be careful. Yes, they do. Let's send our highest HP person on them. <laughs> I'm just going to see if there's any switches or anything around the place. Okay, so that opens. I guess you only you have to stand on the right ones. I'm just not sure which is the right one. Alright, high hit point person. Test one. That killed my entire party. That was a mistake. It would seem. I probably should have moved them backwards. Uh-huh. Well. You can get back up again now, thank you. Oh, indeed. Thankfully it's not combat, so I guess they're fine. But, yes, endurance is now at one and health is at one. Yes. Do we have anything that can... Uh, she, he's been maimed. Lovely. Well, that was the uh, wrong thing to stand on, by the looks of it. Apparently there's a scouting function that I should have used here. How can I help? Stay quiet. Okay. Well, I mean, that's sneaky. Found something. Found something. Oh, you Found can detect something. traps. Where's the look? Where's the look? Where's the look? Where's the look? They've all got bloody traps Found on them. something. Look at this thing. Found something worth a look. Why on earth would I ever want to, uh, I guess I can disarm them. I don't know if he's any good at them. Let's give it a shot. Oh, fuck. That was a mistake. Well, he's on fire again. How can I help? Oh, indeed. Hmm? I was hoping to disarm it. It's left click to disarm, okay. I think we're good, actually. Let's go scouting mode again. Sharp with the look. He's he's good. See, we can we can get through this. Found no something. problem at all. We just need to not yes. run into it. Don't stand on the wrong stuff. Thank you. Ah! Oh, you idiot! Should have moved them through Ron at a time. Oh, no, Kalisha. She's permanently dead, isn't she? Well, that was that. Uh, hopefully this game has autosave, otherwise we're going to be going back a little while. When was the last autosave? Disarm. Right back here. Okay, What's fair that? enough. Well, we know what goes on for me. This is actually a good time to take a short break, as it turns out. And this time around, we might not be horribly stupid. And not get blown up by the traps. I'm going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to bring in a developer. 
And he's going to be answering a few questions from the chat. So do get them ready. Don't spam them just yet. Thank you very much. Because otherwise we won't be getting very far. Uh, but I will be bringing him in quite shortly. I believe his name is Adam Brennick. It is Adam, right? I'm just going to... Dump. Yes, it is Adam Brennick. So he's going to be joining me on the stream to answer some questions from the chat about the game. And we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we will bring you more Pillars of Eternity here on GOG.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stream. We're going to bring on Mr. Adam Brennick, who is going to be answering some of the questions from the chat. And hello, Adam. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine, yes. Hopefully the guys on the stream can hear you as well. You were a little loud there, but I've corrected that. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, welcome to the stream, and uh, first, of course, congratulations on successfully launching the game. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's been amazing today. Yeah, I can imagine. Like, it, it, How long exactly is I it shall. since you first launched the Kickstarter? I forget. Um, It's been two and a half years. I don't know if you remember, we uh, talked, like I think, right at the end of the Kickstarter. I believe we did, yes. I, yep. Uh, yeah, that was, it's that been was amazing two and a half years, and the game is finally out. It's, it's uh, pretty unreal. Yeah, it's kind of crazy when you think about it, that it was actually 2.5 years ago. It does seem quite recent for some reason. I don't really see, I uh, don't know why that is, but uh, I'm just going to reduce your volume it, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, time flies. It does, absolutely. It, All right, so we're about, say, 30 yes. minutes or so into the game. I yeah, imagine the I've character the creation... <laughs> character creation could take a while for those of the, the people who are particularly engrossed by the lore and all sorts of things like that. And of course... You guys are using a completely original lore set this time around. You're not. This is not Baldur's Gate. This is not based on Dungeons and Dragons. No, it's it's our uh, own completely uh, designed rules from the ground up. It's it's very heavily based, in, or inspired by Dungeons and Dragons, of course. But uh, we we definitely wanted to make our own rule set that would be uh, more suitable for a computer RPG. So we've we've uh, we've worked on a lot of Dungeons and Dragons games over the past, you know, 10, 15 years, and there's a lot of like little things that don't work very well in a computer RPG, um, just based on experience working with it. And so we, you know, we used a lot of that experience in designing our rule set, uh, and uh, you know, it's it's meant, you know, D and D is a turn-based game. Uh, so we, we did a lot of little things to improve the, the real-time with pause mm -hmm. system. Yeah, I noticed you also have a, a fast and slow mode as well. So you, it seems like you're encouraging real-time play and not excessive pausing, but you do give the option for that nonetheless, right? Yeah, we, we you know, a, a lot of people have a lot of different ways that they like to play this style of game. So we just wanted to give people a lot of options uh, because a lot of people like to pause a lot. We have a lot of auto-pause options. Uh, you know, there's a huge number of options in this game. Yeah, there's quite uh, a few. I did notice. <laughs> I was digging through it earlier. I was like, wow, that's, uh, that's a lot of stuff that you have there. Yeah, a lot of people like to play, uh, you know, they, they have, you know, different styles that they like to play with. And so we try to give people, you know, the flexibility Wait. to play how they want to play. That, that's not just with the options. That's with, like, you know, how you play your character, too. Yeah, I've noticed that there's a great deal of customization there, and it really does feel initially like it. this is a CRPG in the old school style, and it's really great to see the revival of that, of course. We had Wasteland 2 launch very successfully, which was phenomenal. And then, of course, we have Pillars of Eternity. We've got Numenera on the horizon as yep. well. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a, a great time. time to be a role-playing uh, uh, RPG gamer. It's, there's a lot of really, really good RPGs coming out. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So I'm going to not get blown up by this trap yeah, puzzle I, this time. <laughs> and if I saw you, the last time you, you uh, had a party wipe right here. I'm a moron. That's the main problem. You know, a, a lesser man would blame the game, but I'm an idiot. So it's that. It's entirely my fault. Uh, so I'm now going to scout this out. In the meantime, if you want to pick some questions from the chat to answer, uh, by all means, we've got some... Uh, if you want to ask a question, guys, please do... Uh, put a Q before it so that we know what it is. Nice big uh, uppercase Q. And then uh, our developer here can pick and choose what he wants to answer. And in the meantime, I'll play the game and try not to die for you. How does yeah. that sound? For, for people that don't know, I'm uh, the lead programmer and executive oh. producer on the project. So I can pretty much answer anything that you guys want to know about the game. Uh, so just feel free to ask me anything and I'm, I'll, I'll I'll help. I'll do my best to answer and help out if you have any, any questions some. about now, the game. Um, 
I have a suggestion for you, uh, John. Mm -hmm. uh, you should probably uh, go find some camping supplies and rest. Yes, like uh, my health is terrible and I have It looks no like a guy got kind of beat up there. Now, he he did, yes. He decided he was going to be a tank. It turns out he's not a tank at all. <laughs> but I am, I am now power gaming and disarming every single trap for extra uh, experience. Yeah, so. you, can, you can get some XP by doing yeah. that. What have okay, we here? Let's, let's go to the questions. There's a lot of questions now, flooding in. Something. Feel free to grab whatever you please and Certainly. do do by all means what try and uh, pause the chat if uh, stop it from uh, scrolling if you need it. What have we here? Yeah, it's going by really fast. Oh yes. Um, what have we here? Let me now, let me see what something. I can get here. I don't know. How do you pause what the chat? Do, oh, I bet you don't have that. Uh, there's a great plugin called um, Better Twitch TV. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you generally use that to do it. Um, I think if you scroll what back far enough, here? it'll stop scrolling. Outside of that, um, if you're going to have problems with it, maybe we can get some of the moderators to grab some questions. Now, Unfortunately, I can't grab the questions because I'm currently trying to play the game and I don't have four sets of eyes. Uh, but if, if the moderators would like to grab some questions... From yeah, the that, chat. that would be great. Uh, that What's would be really fast. Yeah, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, and maybe I either whack them in a Google document or something like that so that we can easily do yes. it. I've now disarmed the entire Indeed. trap puzzle for experience, and so okay. now I feel here's, dirty. Here's a question. Uh, how long is the game? The game is really, really long. Um, I think that for most players, it'll probably take at least 40 to 60 hours to play through. Now, we do have a lot of side content in the game, so the majority of the content is actually side content or an optional content. So you don't have to do everything in the game. Um, but for completionists, it's probably going to be about a 100-hour game if you do everything. So there's a lot of content, uh, a lot of, lot of dungeons to explore. There's a huge, uh, you know, long story, and there's a lot of companions that you can pick up and talk to. Uh, so there's there's a lot of oh. meat and potatoes in this game. Hmm? Uh, hmm? Let's see. Next question. Hmm? Um, let's see. Uh, planned expansion. Yes, we need? do have an expansion planned. Uh, we are currently working hmm? on it right Certainly. now. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you have a, a kind of rough release date for that at this point? Oh. Uh, I don't have a. I would say probably this summer. So, cool. yeah. So, how long have you been working on that exactly? I mean, um, I, I assume the way the development works, of course, like you, you're not going to have your art guys working on like the very last day after a game's gone gold just before it releases. Because yeah, correct. Not... Yeah, yeah. So we uh, we start to roll people off um, when they when their bug counts get low, and uh, we we had like a little small team working doing pre production on the expansion for a little while. But now that the game is finished, we can roll more people onto it. Let's see, next question. How is development in Unity? So this game was made with Unity, uh, and Unity is really awesome. Uh, it was really fun to work with. Uh, we were able to prototype the game really quickly. This game is actually made by a very small team. And, How large uh, was the team, exactly? Um, I think at our oh. peak, we peaked at like 25 people, um, which seems like, a, you know, if, if you don't know much about game development, that might seem like a lot of people, but um, it, it's for the, the amount of game that you're getting, um, that, that's not very many people. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a pretty small team, uh, especially like for a, a RPG. What you need? But yeah, working with Unity was really fun. It seems insane to think that a 25-person team in this day and age could develop 100 hours worth of content. <laughs> um, how, exactly? <laughs> you have to be very efficient, have really good tools. Unity is one of those tools that we use. We actually, um, at Obsidian, we've been working on RPGs for a very long time. Indeed you have, yes. And uh, we, we've uh, developed a lot of in-house tools. And, for example... Uh, our conversation tool that we use, we actually used it in South Park, The Stick of Truth, which, mm -hmm. are, which was our last game. Sure. Um, so, you know, we, we do use some tools across projects. And uh, we just, I think having an experienced team that will know, like, the pitfalls and kind of the problems that you're going to have developing this type of game really helps. How is replayability? 
So replayability in this game is fantastic. So you can make new characters, of course. So you can play, you know, there's, if you looked at the character creation, there's, you know, a hundred different types of options for every little thing. Uh, you can play through, there's no doubt yeah, you can that. play through different classes, uh, um, different backgrounds, uh, different races. That, that all changes how the game plays. Uh, so we do have a lot of reactivity depending on what your character class is. Um, there's one little, uh, can you uh, press J? I'll show you a uh, little Absolutely feature. Can. I'm just going to have to skip through oh, this little, I'm in a cutscene right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll just wait for this uh, strangely dressed man to spin <laughs> what appears to be some sort of large egg. I'm not really sure what that is. Okay, this is probably not going to go well. It's a soul-powered cement mixer. That's what it is. Yeah, um, this is a... Uh... Well, I, I, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Yes, we have uh, some storyline stuff here. These little... Uh, but what would you call these? Just kind of narrative cutaways, where you actually those, have some choices. Yeah, like... we call those scripted interactions. Okay. So they're, they're kind of storytelling moments that we want to give... Since our game is 2D um, from a isometric perspective, we wanted to give the player a different look at the world. So we have these really beautiful handcrafted uh, images, and it's kind of like a uh, choose your own adventure type thing. Yeah, that's um, the so vibe have, I got from it, yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of like role playing um, opportunities here too. So a lot of times you can't do a lot of things that you would do normally when you're playing like a tabletop game. Like, for example, a lot of times, like the you want to like climb a wall or go swimming or uh, you know do a do some sort of uh, ability check uh, kind of role playing um, and a lot of times you just can't do that in a traditional you know uh, uh, computer RPG mm -hmm. so we came up with this uh, system which is actually based on a uh, inspired by uh, a very old game called Darklands. And we, we thought that was a really, really cool thing that they did in Darklands. And so um, we, we uh, have many of these throughout the game. Uh, and they're, they're really, really cool. Well, you just murdered my entire party. So there's that. <laughs> I guess I better loot them. Oh, I'm, now I have no inventory space. Let's loot the valuable stuff. Jeez, I'll have your hat. There we go. Oh, my you can put back. your you can put uh, stuff in the stash. Yes, you can. Where where are you stashing the stash? One has to wonder. <laughs> I'm not going to ask. We'll look for the best. Now, let's see what else I can grab. There we go. I'm not sure if I can grab all this gear, but hey, we'll, we'll do what we can. Seems to be a sort of uh, you got uh, area effect loot as well by the looks of it. Yep. Good. And you That's can control nice there. There's an option for that. So you, if you don't want, um, if you don't like it, you can turn it off. If you want it to be bigger, you can change the radius of how big the area loot is. It's a nice little so, feature, nonetheless. It's just, so it's just one a, of those little UI quality of life improvements that you see in more modern titles. So I wanted to show you a cool feature that we have in the game. If you uh, press J. Uh, I'm just going to level up here. Well, looks okay. Like. So we'll just do that quickly. Hmm. That's a survival. Yeah, I can see that being useful. Uh, let's see. I'm a, I'm a little bit behind on the stream. Sure. You'll, you'll see me in the level up okay, screen yeah, momentarily yeah. with my uh, tiny godkin, godlike person. There we go. And spells, spells, spells. We get another one. Hmm. Which one to get? Uh, <laughs> let's get uh, Minoletta's Minor Missiles. Why not? Always nice to have magic missile. And a class talent. Okay, so what do these do? What do we got? Arcane Veil. Two per rest. Deflection. Okay, so that's a defensive spell. Grimoire Slam. Smash an enemy with a Grimoire. Energize with spiritual energy. So hit them with a giant book. That sounds fun. And Blast, which is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, we're going to go with Grimoire Slam, because that sounds like a really good death metal band. Uh, that, that, that is an amazing uh, ability. So you actually yeah. just bash uh, your your enemies with your book, your huge book right there. Fantastic. That's, that's a really fun one. All right. Okay. So J, you were looking at the journal. There we go. Yeah. So if you open up the journal, we have this thing uh, 
if there's a tab uh, that says uh, background, um, I believe it says background. Background. Yeah, if you it. hit J, I'm I'm behind. I don't remember what the top it says. We've oh, got oh, oh, journal. I'm sorry. If you, ah, if yes, you go to journal, journal, okay. We have biography and visions on yeah. that. Yeah. So if you go to your biography, um, this is a thing that is kind of uh, oh. your your personal biography, and that will change depending on how you play through the story. And every single person will have a different uh, biography, and it's really neat to see that updated throughout your play. It's nice to be able to keep track as well. I mean, I know a lot of players for some games will... They may just not finish a game, and they'll come back to it a lot later and then forget what on Earth's happened. So it's nice to be able to have that record there. Very nice. I'm just reading through it to see if I notice anything that, uh, that I've done. There we go. <laughs> and also visions as well. All right. And my character is stupidly low on HP, and I found, I've found i yet to find camping supplies, I'm going to be honest. I don't know where, where to find them. Yeah, um, I can help you with that. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm currently running around, and there's this weird purple haze all up in my brain here um, as I go down the steps towards what appears to be a bunch of frozen corpses and the giant egg machine. <laughs> uh, well, I am stealing people's flesh. That makes me a bit of a dick. Uh. I guess they don't so one of the anymore. one of the questions from the the chat, there was a question saying, "Do we have a castle like Neverwinter Nights 2? We actually do have a stronghold. It is something that you get during the story, and it's your own personal castle, and it's almost like its own little mini game. And you have it, it's it's almost you know it's a you have to manage your upgrades, uh, manage the people working at your castle." And you can actually resolve quests by taking prisoners and put the, putting them in your dungeon. You have your own dungeon in your castle. Uh, and it's, it's really cool. Hmm, now, I, I remember this name. What's that? Silent List. That was in a journal that I read earlier, if I recall correctly. But yeah, that's the name of this area. Yeah, okay. Well, I think I've explored this entire area. So I suppose, after having my entire party exploded, I should probably go back into the cave. I think that's the only way to go, right? There's a... Uh, see where it says... Uh, there's a little map icon in the corner where it says north. Ah. Down at the... I don't know if you see that. It's, oh, I see. It. A... Yes, yes, yes. Oh, so that, that'll take you to the exit. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. There we go. Ah, I see. And now you actually have the fairly large sort of overworld here. Yeah, that's the world map. All right. Okay. So probably don't. I probably want to go to the nearest city and get all uh, fixed up. I imagine, and also sell a bunch of this junk. So can I get there? Apparently not yet. So the next place no, I you... go is Valewood. Yeah, you have to go to Valewood. And at the start of Valewood, there's camping supplies there. Okay. Good. Uh, I think to the I think it's right to the left. On a dead body. Welcome some rest. All right, I see a dead body. There are camping supplies. Good. Excellent. I might have. I might have played this game. <laughs> you, you think? <laughs> yeah. That is a possibility. All right, let's camp, and then that should get my health up and hopefully fix all of my fatigue issues. There we go. So I use one out of four camping supplies. Ooh, pretty cutscenes. Very nice. Also with the purple and the crystals and so forth. All right. Good. Well, my character actually has health now, so that's good. That's more than he had before. So hopefully, if we encounter any bears or something like that, we should be fine. This this place is probably full of bears, isn't it? Come on. There's no way you didn't fill this full of bears. Uh, there, yeah, th this is a pretty dangerous area, so you should be careful. All right. Um, we found some blood moss. I assume the, there is a crafting system in this game, isn't it? How exactly does there, that work? There is a crafting system if you uh, open up the inventory. Mm -hmm. There's a button that says crafting. And it's all recipe based by the looks of it. Yeah. And there's also enchanting. So if you right click on any of, uh, if you have armor or a, a weapon, you can right click on it and enchant it with different enchants. Okay. None of which I have currently learned, but we know they're there. That's always good. 
and it'll tell you what recipes you need. Oh, I thought I had a Zurup tongue. I'm pretty sure I ripped it out of that nasty little beastie earlier, but never mind. All right. Well, let's sneak our way through this and try not to be eaten by bears. <laughs> That's the plan, and we're sticking to it. All right. Looks like we've got uh, plenty more questions in the chat, actually, if you're able to grab a few more. Yeah, sure. Um, are his party members dead permanently? Yes. I'd say there so. Is, they look pretty damn there, dead to me. <laughs> there is permadeath in this game. It is... Uh, those two companions always die. Um, however, there is permadeath in the game that you can toggle on and off if you want to play with it on. Um, and party members can die permanently. And that, it, if you're hardcore like that, if you like to... This, this game is hard. It's, it's a very difficult game, so if you enjoy playing hard games, uh, I would recommend playing on normal. Uh, if you are really experienced playing these types of games and like a challenge, I'd recommend playing on hard. We also have an easy mode. The easy mode is what we recommend people starting on. Outlaw was dead. Lovely. We hit it with the book. It was effective. All right. And he has a bunch of stuff. Nice. Grab this. Uh, I'm not. There's a question. How hard is it to port to Linux? Uh, we do have it. It works on Linux. So if you buy the game on Steam, you can play on Linux. Fantastic. It's always good. Uh, let's see. Can you change the difficulty mid-game? Yes, you can change the difficulty whenever you want. However, there are a few challenge-based difficulty settings. Uh, that you won't be able to get some of the achievements if you turn them on and off during the, the playthrough. So when you start a new game, you can set some of these options. Um, one of them is Trial of Iron, and Trial of Iron is super, super hardcore mode. So that means you only have one save game. If you die, we delete your save game. Just for those that <laughs> like to waste extra amounts of their life, you know? Yes. And then we have uh, expert mode. Expert mode has, um, like, permadeath is in expert mode. Uh, it's kind of more of like the, the traditional hardcore computer RPG players. It turns off a lot of little helper things here and there. Um, and then we also have a super hardcore difficult mode called Path of the Damned. And Path of the Damned is extremely, extremely hard. Uh, one, one interesting thing that we do in Pillars of Eternity is we actually don't scale anything um, stats-wise when you put the game on a harder difficulty. We actually change the encounters. So you might encounter different uh, monsters when you're playing on hard, uh, different groups of creatures to make the encounters harder. Um, for example, I think like this encounter has Maybe uh, uh, you're, you're fighting three young wolves. Yeah. Um, I think there's uh, a bigger wolf when you're playing on a uh, harder difficulty. Right. Well, I'm glad I didn't pick that one. <laughs> there we go. And there's uh, one of the achievements that we have. Uh, it's it's uh, called um, Triple Crown Solo. And so the Triple Crown is playing through the game with... Uh, Path of the Damned, Trial of Iron, Expert Mode, and not taking any companions. So if you can beat the game uh, using the Triple Crown solo, there's an achievement for that. Fantastic. I've got a question of my own, actually, and that's about the, the budget of the game. Uh, did you guys end up coming in under budget, or did you kind of run into the problems that a lot of these Kickstarter games have where you you had to put in more money to actually finish the game off? Yeah, we, we did have to put in more money to finish the game off. So uh, we decided to extend the the project for a few more months. Sure. So initially we, we wanted to ship in uh, November of last year, but we wanted a few more months of polish. So we, we had to put in some of our own money. It's fair enough. But at least it didn't come in uh, massively over budget by the sounds of it. No, no. Uh, I think we, we right. did a pretty good job with budgeting and, and scheduling. If I recall correctly, was when the strongholds actually a stretch goal at one point? Was that correct? Yeah. That um, the so a few of our stretch goals were uh, the second big city, 
which is Twin Elms. Um, so we have two big cities in the game. And when I say big cities, I mean they're big. They're multiple maps, really, really big, uh, sprawling cities with, you know, hundreds of NPCs in them. So we have two of those. One of those was a, was a stretch goal. Uh, the stronghold system was a stretch goal. Crafting was a stretch goal. So there's a lot of little uh, kind of like bonus features that we had as stretch goals. Uh, all, originally, we only planned, uh, we ended up with 11 classes and all those were stretch goals as well. There we go, let's beat up this young wolf, get it out of the way. One of the questions is, is there any romance? That is a really good question. So we don't have any love interests for the player in the game. We do have relationships that you can build with the companions. Uh, a lot of our writers, uh, with the kind of the constraints that we had on the writing team, they didn't feel like we could do a romantic relationship properly. Um, I feel that most games can't do romantic relationships properly, <laughs> so uh, RPGs so, particularly tend to fall into that particular trap. It, yeah, it always ends up, at least in my view, a lot of it ends up as being uh, feed the romantic interest until you get enough points to get a reward scene, which really doesn't seem to be like that, the way that you'd build a relationship. Yeah, they're almost like little, uh, like it's 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 weird, and we didn't really want to do that with this game. We didn't feel like it fit, fit the the themes and the the story as well. Yeah. Um, but you do you do get uh, there are eight companions that you can find that are just like. Uh, companions that are found in Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate Sharp 2. Um, so if you if you enjoy our companions and the writing of the companions, we do have those, and you can build relationships with them, but not found not love bear. relationships. Yeah, this fight is really tough. So oh, uh, I guess we'll see if I, uh, my shields hold up. Ow, that was half my health. Wow. Okay, I should probably be running from this. I'm gonna I'll hit him with the book and see what happens. Oh, he's taking some damage. Let's see. What does the most damage here? Ah, this actually gives me... Uh, if I use my parasitic staff, I gain endurance. So, and that killed me, didn't it? <laughs> he killed me in the second swipe. Should have yeah, seen he, that one coming. He hits really hard. Yes, we will not fight the bear next time. Thank you very much. Good lord. That was a mistake. All right. Well, I mean, you did say none of the enemies scale, so this is the kind of thing you'd maybe come back to later and decide I can maybe Yeah, kill when you have more party members, it's a lot easier because then you can have a tank. Yes. Uh, you know, take the brunt of the, the hits. Mm -hmm. I think there was a pertinent question asked in the chat. Um, is there any hamster companion of any description? <laughs> so one of the pre-order items is a uh, space pig. Yes, my wife has that. She's very proud of it. Yeah, so that was our little throwback to... To boo. He was a wonderful thing. Alright, let's see if we can get out of this area. It's gotta be this way, right? There we go. One of the uh, questions was, is there modding in the game? Uh, so can you make mods for Pillars of Eternity? And the answer is yes. There are already people making mods. Uh, in our backer beta, we had people make UI mods and rules mods. Um, and we are uh, working with people, and we're going to work with the community to, to figure out if we can figure out a way for people to make custom maps and areas. Uh, it's, it's really complicated, so we're trying to figure out a good way uh, for people to import their own uh, assets into the game. Yeah, but I, mean, I know it's really important to, to our community that, that they can extend the game in, in different ways. And so now that we've we've shipped the game, we can, you know, look at that more closely and, and, and work with uh, artists and, and modders to figure out, you know, how to how to make it work. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I think there's a there's a degree of expectation surrounding because of the way that Neverwinter Nights was set up with uh, the way that you could build adventure packs for that. And I mean, that game had a ridiculous amount of longevity as a direct result. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We and we know that uh, even with all the the Bethesda games, you know, people love their crazy mods, and sure. it definitely helps. Uh, and they're they're it makes the game fun too. So yeah, it's, it's a nice it's a nice thing to do if you can, you know. 
how much work goes really into making a game moddable, I suppose. I, I, and it's got to vary on an engine-by-engine -engine basis, but what about in Unity? Yeah, um, so... That's and that's one reason why we're you know we we don't have like mod tools right off the the bat because this is our first time working with Unity and we're we're not really we're still not really sure like how some things work um, especially with for making mods uh, so we're we're it's we're still learning um, it is a enormous amount of work so I worked on Neverwinter Nights two and I worked on the tool um, that we released publicly and that is a like enormous amount of work uh for the development team you have to have full-time people like just focused on making mod tools and making the the tools user friendly because a lot of developer tools are very very obtuse yes, and hard to use bit, yeah. um and very strange and break you know if, if you don't do things like perfectly you know the way that it's meant to be uh, uh done it'll crash or just not work at all mm -hmm. Well, I just got a cape. That excites me greatly. I'm not sure where it went. I think it's in my stash. Let's have a look. Uh, one of the questions is, is, there's, is there multiplayer? Uh, there is no multiplayer. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to have multiplayer in the game. I know a lot of people love multiplayer, um, but we weren't able to do that for this game. Um, just because of our, we had a re really, really small budget. Um, However, uh, we would we would love to do it for uh, you know, you know, moving forward. Um, we would like to look at that because I know a lot of people really really enjoy multiplayer. I imagine that's got to be possibly the most expensive thing you could possibly do, right? It, 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 the adding a multiplayer support to a game of this size. Yeah, it, it's also, um, you know, it's very very story based. And a lot of things just don't work in a multiplayer environment. And so you have to do a lot of work, um, especially the programmers have to do a lot of, uh, and, and, and even on the design side, there, there, there's some compromises that have to be made on the design side to have a multiplayer friendly game. And we felt that we didn't, uh, that was another thing. We, didn't, we wanted a really, really good single player story experience. And so adding multiplayer would uh, you know, there's a lot of difficulties involved with, with adding that. What is this? Ah, I've earned reputation. Okay. So, yeah, the there's, a, there's, a, like me. Yep, there's a reputation system. Uh, there's, there's actually two types of reputation in the game. There's a, a system called dispositions. And dispositions are how you talk to people. So you can be an asshole or a jerk to people, or uh, you can be very nice and kind, and people will react to you differently depending on how you how you talk. Mm -hmm. um, there's also reputation with factions and towns of the world. Uh, so if you do quests, people um, will either negatively or positively react to you depending on uh, what factions you've helped or. Uh, or hurt, or you know, if you if you run around and kill people, you'll you'll definitely get negative rep with their um, their village or their yeah. faction. All right, I've got to find myself the inn. I'm not sure where that is. One of the questions was: Is the world randomly generated? The uh, there's nothing in the game that is randomly generated besides uh, some of the loot. Um, that you find the entire world is very handcrafted and that's one thing that Pillars of Eternity does so well is it every environment is handcrafted it's not a tile based game um, they're all it's all hand with with lots of love and care uh, every area um, is you know designed and uh, every every environment it was made by an artist and it and it's very uh, organic looking um, all the Dungeons are very organic looking and, and all different. So I've got a particular question to ask, and this is just as, sort of as your opinion as someone that has a great deal of experience in this particular genre. We've had a recent resurgence in CRPGs, but I have to ask, why exactly do you think they stopped coming out in the first place? What, a, what caused CRPGs to slow down in terms of production and become, for a while, actually a completely dead genre? 
Yeah, um, I, my, my hunch would be, so in the, especially right around the late, um, or late 90s, early 2000s, that was kind of when the game industry transi transitioned from uh, 2D to like 3D, and like 2D, most of the RPGs were all 2D, mm -hmm. and making a 3D RPG either looked really ugly or it just wasn't like an attractive looking game. Um, um, the the exit is to the south if you uh, follow yeah, the road. Yeah, in that direction now. Yeah. Just okay. found myself the bridge. There we go. So, I think a lot of publishers uh, and and the the other thing I think consoles kind of really blew up in the the two thousands, and RPGs aren't really a you know, especially this type of RPG, it really does not work on a console. You know, it's 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 really meant to be played with a mouse and keyboard. Mm, I think anyone that played, try even tried to play, uh, I think it was the original Dragon Age on 360, did not work out so well, I gotta say. They, they improved things since then, but then again, they also changed the style of the game to make that work. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, and I think, like, now that there are other publishing options and like Steam is really, you know, with di digital distribution, Steam um, is really easy to get your game out there. And especially with Kickstarter now, now, now that we can get funding for these types of games, that's why we're seeing so many of these RPGs come back. Yeah, it does make sense. I mean, we had uh, uh, Divinity Original Sin, of course, was kickstarted. Numenera was kickstarted. Wasteland 2 was kickstarted. And this was kickstarted. Yep. I mean, shows an obvious desire from the market. When ev I mean, we just listed four of the most successful Kickstarter games that exist in terms of yeah. the amount that they actually raised. And, of course, three of those games are now out. And we're still waiting on Numenera, which is probably going to be fantastic as well. Interesting little resurgence, really. It's it's a little strange, I suppose, to see publishers ignore a genre that obviously has merit and clearly people want to play it. But as you mentioned, there are different options now to actually create a game like that. So the traditional publisher developer model need not apply. Yeah, exactly. So this area is Gilded Vale, and <laughs> this this kind of sets the tone for the game right here. Um, so this game is a mature game, um, and it is very it's it's pretty hardcore. The story is is pretty dark, um, and it kind of gives you a taste of what's to come. Yes, yeah, it's not exactly a pleasant tree, is it? If no. Have to wait until after yes. the birth. I did dispense with the pleasant trees. Hmm. After the bell tolls from Radric's hold, I'm just trying to not get stabbed by this guy at this point. We're going to be heading in the direction of the inn, I think, like since we have a but if you're... quest there. Keep there out of. And so uh, one of the is going on. One of the questions from the chat is, would you use Kickstarter again? And most definitely, I would use it again. Uh, so I was heavily involved with running the Kickstarter campaign for this game. Uh, I was involved from the very beginning. It is a tremendous amount of work to run a Kickstarter campaign. It, it is probably the most insane month that you could possibly do. In, like It's just nonstop like, for, for the entire month. Um, but it was definitely very, very rewarding, and I would, I would definitely do it again. What exactly is involved in running a Kickstarter campaign? Because I think for <laughs> those of you who are t who look uh, look out from the outside, just like, well, occasionally you update a Kickstarter page, and then people throw money at you. What, what, what more is involved in it? Yeah, so just getting like you know all the rewards uh, figured out and the tiers. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of. Uh, I wouldn't say hard science, but there's you know there's a lot of research involved to get the right tiers and and making sure that all the back rewards are uh, planned out ahead of time, um, all the images that are involved with with the page and the movie that you have to make. That there's a lot of prep that goes into um, setting up the Kickstarter to begin with, and then once you go live, um, uh, you know, thankfully we we saw a lot of success hey, with our well Kickstarter, went. so. We were funded in in uh, I think uh, 27 hours or something like that, um, but then 
at that point, you you want to keep the money coming in, um, and so people demand stretch goals, and so that's that's one thing to kind of uh, you can add more features to the game, or or, or kind of uh, it's kind of a fun way of of adding to the game and, and letting people know you know oh we're we're going to be adding like the stronghold system or the crafting system or more races and all that stuff has to be prepared and and really really well thought out because you don't want to you know hang yourself later on when you have when you made all these promises and you can't deliver on the promises and and so you really have to be very careful about the stretch goals and make sure that the budget you know it fits within the budget and everything like that um, but you have to do updates every day, um, and just preparing the updates and, uh, you know, making sure that all that is, is smoothly running, um, is, is, is a lot of work. Um, there is an in if you go, yep, uh, heading in that direction right now. Okay. So okay. So I was thinking maybe I'll go into that dungeon, then I realized, hang on a minute. I have no spells and half my HP. This is a dumb idea. <laughs> Let's not do yeah, that. It, in the in the Blackhound Inn, you can buy camping supplies too. Yeah, might be a good idea. I've got a ton of junk to sell, so I'm hoping to find somewhere that I can sell it. But it looks like I'm going to be accosted by somebody first. I meant no offense. Hope this is uh, one of our companions. His name's Aloth. Eh? Okay. We don't need your coin. Ooh, a fight. Yes, that sounds like a good option. <laughs> oh dear. Say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fire, you're itching for the kindling touch yeah, of your Yeah, Aloth is a, uh, another wizard. I'll cut that barrel like a tongue out of your... This is a misunderstanding. <laughs> I didn't say He has some quite colorful language, let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, hmm. How exactly do you estimate how much a stretch goal requires? Because from the outside, it really looks so arbitrary. When it's like, well, with $100,000, this feature will magically appear. Yeah. It, it's A lot of it is just based on experience. We try to figure out how long it's going to take. Like, so with crafting, you know, we, we sit down. I, I sit down with the game director, and we kind of figure out, like, okay, um... How, how many hours do you think this will take the team to put in? And then we can use that data to figure out if it's a worthwhile stretch goal. Um, and and it, it also has to be a good good enough feature to Not make it worthwhile. Quite, um, and it has to be kind of tangible too, like something that people that understand. And, and uh, you know, if you have a crafting system, people, you know, immediately understand what that means. And how exactly in Gwythyn Ruins? Well, we blew up some of the villages and everything and there was much rejoicing. Which these mm. are not. Here's a question. Are party characters developed like Baldur's Gate that you can get attached to, or are they just tools to beat down monsters? Be honest. Mm. <laughs> so they they Challenge. are definitely if if you have played any Obsidian Entertainment game, um we, our companions are, are almost exactly similar to any of our other games. So um, if you if you played uh, Fallout New Vegas, our, our companions are, are very similar to the Fallout New Vegas characters or Neverwinter Nights 2 or uh, Mask of the Betrayer. So it's it's in a similar kind of realm. Um, and they're, they're definitely, uh, you know, very meaty. There's a lot of dialogue with each one of them. Um, we we have done some different things with with yes. our companions in in pillars, uh, so one thing that uh, is kind of a cool feature that I really like is uh, occasionally um, instead of interrupting the play, where um, in our past games, if if one of the companions wanted to talk, they would just kind of interrupt the game, and you'd have a long conversation. And sometimes you it's like, well, I'm in the middle of a dungeon, I don't want to talk right now. Um, so we have this little talk bubble that will appear on their portrait. If they want, if they have something to say, um, and so you can kind of, uh, you know, if you're in the middle of something, you don't have to talk to them right away, and you can sure. click on the little talk bubble. That's always nice, and no elevators for conversations. I noticed, at least up to this point, <laughs> and no bloodborne length loading screens either. I'll deal with that. <laughs> oh my, it's nice to be on PC sometimes. I've got to say. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so she actually likes me because we sent her cook back, I believe. So everything's yep. right with the world. Oh, you can even change the size of this window. That's nice. There we go. I made it a bit small. All right, so let's see what she has for sale. And let's buy lots and lots of camping supplies. If I can afford them. See if I can... Is she going to buy all of this stuff from me? Probably not. I've got a question, actually. Uh, do different vendors give different amounts? Um, yes. Yep, because these yep. weapons are apparently worth very little to the innkeeper. I guess that makes sense. So most of the, most of the uh, kind of loot that you get, um, especially in the first few or few areas in the game, are, are kind of like kind of like junk items. Mm -hmm. But they're they're worth a little bit. Um, depending on what your reputation is, uh, different vendors have different like sell and buy prices. Fair enough. I should. And you can also recruit adventurers. Okay, so th are these sort of generic companions that just mercenaries that can help you out? Yeah, so if you don't like... So, for example, if you don't like Aloth, like, you're just like, I don't like this guy, you can not adventure with him, and you can just make whatever character you want to make. Um, or if you want to make a gimmick party, like, that's one of the things that we really like to do is make gimmick parties. So if you want a, a party of all wizards, or all chanters, or, you know... All, ra all ranger party is really fun um, with guns, you know, march around with a bunch of uh, guns and, and animal companions. Uh, you, you can play, you know, we, we give the, the player a lot of options to, to play how they want to play. Uh, I know a lot of people that played Icewind Dale really like to make their own uh, parties. So we, you know, we, we added the recruitment system for that. People to talk to. Let's uh, talk to Dugan Steel Caller. What the? Um, okay. There's a question. Are there plans on translating the game to other languages? So the game is already localized and translated in, I think, six or seven different languages. And it's, you know, you can switch your language at any time. Um, I, I'm, I think it's Spanish, German, Polish, Russian, Italian. Um, French. That's a decent number. Will your beard grow over time? <laughs> Fortunately, we did not, no dynamic we did not beard get physics. the tech. We didn't get the Witcher 3 tech in time. Uh, well, I can't, I can't possibly recommend the game now. The Metacritic rating is going to tumble after hearing that <laughs> one. Speaking of which, the, your Metacritic rating is... Not too shabby, I'd have to say. Pretty <laughs> good up to this point. You uh, currently have the same as Bloodborne. Uh, yeah, it's, that's pretty amazing. I would never have thought that this game would uh, be received so well. Yeah, although I think Bloodborne needs to be a little lower until they fix their loading screen issues. But hey, I'm just picky <laughs> like that. It, it is cool, though. It's it's interesting to see that people did... Re it resonated with pretty much everybody, honestly. Uh, I know you guys sent the code out. It was about a week ago, I think, to most people. Maybe a little bit earlier yeah, than that. Yeah, it was and, about a week ago. Yeah, and uh, some of the guys that I talked to is like, yeah, I've just been engrossed in this game all week. I personally, unfortunately, didn't have the time, so I'm going to have to be working on it over the next couple of weeks, but it's, it's a lot of content. I mean, I can't imagine that any <laughs> of the reviewers actually finished it because it's just so damn long. Yeah, we had a few people that got, got to the end. Yeah. But most of the reviewers weren't able to finish it. No. That's that's one of those situations where it's kind of understandable because it's just it's so ludicrously lengthy that you're gonna have to hit your deadline at some point. But then again, what's the likelihood of eighty hours in the game suddenly gets terrible, right? You know, it's not an MMO. Uh here's a question. Um what makes this game different from something like Diablo? So deal, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's definitely a different type of role playing game. Uh, it it is you you can make your own character and kind of the the character that you want to be in the world, and you can it, it's it's more of a traditional role playing game where you you can role play that character um, and and be that character, and it, it's there's a lot more uh, story and and. Uh, writing that you have to read so a lot of reading um, and it is also a, a party based game so you have a party of up to six characters 
and uh, you can control each one of them individually. The combat is a little more in depth than a game like Diablo, um, so it's not so much hack and slash. It's it's a little more uh, tactical. Uh, tactical. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of pausing involved in it. But we do one one thing that I think uh, a lot of Diablo fans will like. We do have a mega dungeon, um, so which is as deep as the original Diablo game. So ah, okay. I'm pretty sure Diablo 1 was 15 levels. Our mega dungeon is 15 levels. So there is a huge dungeon in the game. So if you love to go dungeoneering and, and, and explore a huge dungeon, there's, there's a really, really cool dungeon in the game. What level and it's do actually you have to underneath to your stronghold. Like how long would you probably have to play the game for before you could take on the mega dungeon? Yeah, so it it definitely gets a uh, it it starts off pretty easy. Um, you can, I think, uh, you know, you probably can do a, the first few levels at level you know three or four, um, but you definitely need to go back. Um, you can't. You definitely can't beat the the, the entire dungeon at level three, uh, character level. Uh, so it gets progressively harder, and the the last few levels are very very difficult. But there is fat loot at the bottom, right? Of course, and there's there's a cool uh, quest that uh, is kind of intertwined with the the story of the dungeon. I'm enjoying selling all of my junk here. There we go. I now have a rope and grappling hook and some supplies, which is always nice. There we go. So here's a here's a question. Um, do the conversation choices change with different stats? For example, if your character has low intelligence, will his replies be grunts like Fallout 2? Ah. So we do not have low intelligent conversation options. Uh, but we do have a lot of conversation choices that will unlock depending on your character class, your race, your, your gender, uh, your background, your culture, and uh, your reputation, of course. And uh, and also just depending on how you play through the game, different options will unlock as well. Yeah, I noticed quite a few of those earlier. We had a law-specific option that was able to put me in a. I'm not sure if it actually helped me at all, but actually I think it did. I'm pretty sure it did when I when I <laughs> messed around with that. And then we even had I think there were two intelligence options in the same conversation. One of which was actually even higher than the yeah, other. Yeah. Which is unusual. I don't think I've ever seen that in a CRPG. It's usually <laughs> just, well, you've broken a certain int threshold, therefore you unlock this. But now it's like, oh, well, there's actually multiple thresholds, which is very unusual. Good day, yeah, James. one thing that we did with this game, which we haven't done before, is actually show all those options. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can, t if you don't like seeing that stuff, you can turn it off. Um, so we do have a, like a requirement not met um, little qualifier that will show up. So if you, if you. And that will show you, like, oh, man, if I replayed the game, um, maybe I could have chosen this and something different would have happened. And so that's, that's kind of a neat thing. You can turn it off if you don't like seeing that stuff, but it, it, it definitely shows you all the different choices that you have during conversations. I've got to ask so this you... Is a little, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. This is a little tidbit. Um, this is the Black Hound Inn, which was uh, when uh, Baldur's Gate 3 was in development at... Black Isle Studios, that was the, the subtitle for that game. Ah. So it's a little throwback. Cool. I, I've got to ask, is it possible to mess up a character build? Because I've got to be honest, I went into it and I was a little bewildered by the amount of choice, especially considering the things like the spells. I had really no idea what I was going to go for there. Um, did you build anything into the game to make it harder to mess your character up to the point where they would just not be effective anymore? Yeah, um, so one thing that our game director, Josh, he is very passionate ab about making sure that people cannot, it's it's not like you can't make a bad character, but there's not like any trap choices. Um, so in, especially in like uh, older Dungeons and Dragons games, it's really, really easy to just make a terrible character. Um, like. There's some stats that don't even do anything on, on certain character classes mm -hmm. or builds. And we wanted to make sure that every um, every option kind of has a, a 
a reason for being there. Um, so you can build um, kind of gimmicky characters or, you know, try stuff out with the rule system. Um, and you can, like, if you want to make a, a tanky wizard um, that, you know, is a frontline uh, wizard, you can kind of build a character like that. Um, and, and it might not be the most effective wizard, but you, if you want to try to try to play that type of character, you can go for it. And so there's a, you know, our, our stat system there, and even how our, uh, uh, when you level up, there's not a lot of trap choices with, uh, you know, if you might screw up your character build because you didn't understand the rules. Um, there, there's not a whole lot of that in this game, or I would say none of that in this game. Um, so you, we give the player a lot of options to kind of, uh, try to tr you know try out different things and there's not really any penalty for it all right well we are actually approaching the end of the stream we've just got a couple of minutes uh, left so adam i'd like to thank you very much for giving over an hour of your time to talk to the stream it's absolutely fantastic and again congratulations on the launch of pillars of eternity which you can find drm free on gog and i would strongly recommend that you pick it up from gog because drm free is a nice little feature to have and you can pick that up for $45. And that's uh, also fair translation to euros as well. So you're not going to be paying the same price there. Although, actually, I think the euro is quite close to the dollar at the moment. So you're probably going to get something like that. But regardless, it's a fair price and DRM free available from GOG.com as well as many other classic and newer titles. We're going to be handing this one over to Outstar Walker, who is going to be continuing from this point playing the same character. So you're going to be getting... A little bit more progression. Obviously, we haven't progressed too much uh, since we've uh, brought uh, the interviewee on, but we've got ourselves a party member. Our short, uh, strange mage has his head on fire always <laughs> and is uh, looking to intimidate people and is staring into people's souls, apparently, at the moment, trying to find a dead dwarven woman because, well, RPGs. That's how it works. So, Adam, thank you very much for yeah, up your time Yeah, thank today. you so much for having me. It's been an amazing ride, and I, I hope everyone enjoys the game. Um, thanks uh to gog uh for having us on here it's it's been really fun yeah congratulations to you and your team for a successful launch after what's no doubt been a very trying two and a half years so well done and of course big thanks for supporting the pc rpg scene because god knows we could have done with a few good ones of those <laughs> lately and thankfully we have been getting them it's a good time to be a crpg gamer right now and uh, hopefully there's uh, some more great stuff coming up later in the year so we're going to hang up on adam now we're going to hand over the stream to outstar walker who will be continuing this so we're going to dig out the saved file and hand it on over and you can watch yet more of pillars of eternity if you're still not convinced then you'll get a few more hours of gameplay right here on twitch.tv slash gogcom Thank you very much for watching, folks. My name has been uh, Total Biscuit. If you missed the stream, no doubt you'll be able to catch it on the VODs. You'll be able to use the VOD section of GOG.com's Twitch. And I usually gets uploaded to YouTube as well. You should be able to find that. And big thanks to our special guest, Adam, who is, of course, one of the lead developers on the game over there at Obsidian. Big thanks to GOG for their sponsorship of Axiom Esports. And, of course, this stream being kind of brought to you as part of that. And don't go anywhere. In a few minutes, we'll be handing over to our next streamer and we'll be continuing with the Pillars of Eternity mega stream.